Hi, this is Ryan from Dakota Angler and Outfitter, and today we're going to be tying a fish skull pike tube fly. We're using the Pro Sport Fisher Predator XL needle in our vise here for the tubing, and then the Pro Sport Fisher Predator XL tubing as well. So I start with a piece that's maybe a little over an inch long. I'm going to start my thread just a little ways forward on it. Probably a third of the way, maybe. So trim off your excess. Make sure you kind of got a good base started here. And we'll take a piece of bucktail. We're going to do this flying yellow, so we'll use some yellow bucktail. And cut out a pretty good clump of it, maybe two matchsticks, matchstick and a half. And we'll comb out the junk out of the bottom of it. And if there's any really long fibers, I like pulling those out too, just so most of the fibers are pretty similar length. Alright, so with these. This bucktail is pretty long, so I'm going to trim it to probably four inches. It's on the butt side. And we'll take and we're going to reverse tie it. So we'll tie it with the butts facing the rear of the tube. Kind of spread it evenly around the hook, or the tube, sorry. Do two or three loose wraps. And then just go through and make sure it's pretty evenly spread. Because it'll flare a lot better if you have it kind of uniform around the tube. Alright, so then, I'm going to just slip there, and you'll start flaring it, so do one or two wraps, do it a little tighter, one or two more, and that should be enough of a flare there. So then we'll take and trim off your excess back here, and this is all going to be covered up anyway, so you don't have to be real precise about it, just as long as you get most of the crap off of there. Alright, then I'll take and put just a little dot of super glue where we tied all that in. We're just using brushable Loctite here. Alright, so now we'll take and kind of make sure again it's pretty even. And fold it back. You can use a, an empty pen for this too. A lot of times I like using my finger because I think I can get it a little more even. But whatever you prefer. And you kind of fold it all back. Once you get it where you like it, just kind of grab onto the whole clump. And then do kind of some looser wraps in front. So you can kind of just build a little taper at the back of this, or at the front of this. And that will determine the flare and the angle of your fly. We like it to be about 45 degrees probably, that looks about right. Okay, so now that we have our bucktail flared, I'm going to take a pretty big clump of yellow magnum flashaboo, and I like to stagger the ends on that, so when you cut it off, just take and pull them all different lengths. And we'll tie this in kind of right in the center, maybe 60-40. Just kind of spread it around the hook as much as you can, and do a couple loose wraps to kind of trap all this down. Alright, and then just like we did with the bucktail, we'll kind of go around and make sure everything's pretty even. Just make sure finished fly look better. I like the fly to be pretty symmetrical all the way around. There's really no, other than when you put the eyes on it, there's really no top or bottom to it. Okay, center down. Fold the rest of this back. Oops. And then tie that down like that so you got your bucktail reverse tied some flash around it if you have any really wild flash fibers you can cut them out or trim them got a couple that are pretty long I like the finish flies to be around probably six or seven inches if you can you can catch fish on bigger flies than that but I like them to be just a little more reasonable Alright, so now what we're going to do, a lot of times on these flies I like taking and doing two colors of flash. A lot of times I'll do one that contrasts rather than like a matching color just so it gives a little more depth. So now we're going to take about half as much black holographic magnum flash abu. We'll do the same exact thing as we did with the yellow. Just got a couple loose wraps. Spread it around as much as you can. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but 
if you take and kind of even it up it looks a lot better I think all right and fold it all back tie it all down so the nice thing kind of the idea of these flies is that bucktail is just like a prop for everything else so you're really not using very many materials but it's given it the illusion of being pretty a pretty big fly overall so now this probably isn't a necessary step but I like taking and doing a couple pieces of like red or black gold even lateral scale on the sides we're gonna do red on this flies because I have it handy I should take and just do two pieces of lateral scale flash on each side of the fly kind of gives the fly, most fish kind of have a lateral line so it gives the fly just a little different look it's more for you than the fish but it definitely looks a little nicer right, so do two on each side alright like that you can kind of spread them wherever you want and trim them off okay. I'm kind of taking a couple tight wraps, clean that up a little bit so now we're going to take and use a dubbing loop so we'll just make a loop here make it probably two, two and a half inches long and we're going to use some uh, ripple ice fiber which is a really cool material for both trout streamers and predator flies both we'll take and put our dubbing loop tool on here so we'll take enough ripple ice fiber to make a dubbing loop that is probably a turn and a half anywhere between a turn and two turns is probably fine but it just kind of cleans the front of the fly up and you don't see a lot of that tie-in point that way just a little more than that. Alright, so I've got a fair amount, and you'll lose a lot of this once you comb it out. It's kind of tough with the camera to get this loaded in here. You just put it right in the center of the dubbing loop. Then kind of spread it out, like I said. So imagine going around that tube one to two times spread it out so it's about that length and then I pinch it right below where the ripple ice fiber stops spin and then kind of let go it'll kind of all spin at once and then do just a little more just to make sure everything's caught in there nicely and then we'll take a bodkin so we've got all these trapped fibers in here so you can take and pick all those out so the idea is is that you just have essentially two pieces of thread in the center of this and everything else is just caught in between those rather than a bunch of other materials so there's just material coming out perpendicular to it so if you can make the bottom the center of the dubbing loop pretty thin it wraps a lot nicer too all right I like that's good so then you'll take and fold this back just like a piece of estaz chenille start wrapping around like I said one to two turns is fine just enough to kind of cover the whole front of the tie-in point and everything up. Okay, so I'll take and tie that down. Okay, do a couple of wraps over the top of that and trim off the tag of your dubbing loop here. Gel spun thread can be some pretty tough stuff so make sure your scissors are fairly sharp. Okay, so then with these tubes, a lot of the hard part for a lot of people with these is actually finishing the fly. So because it's so far back from the end of our needle, we'll actually take and pull the fly. So there's a second step here, a second little taper. You can pull the fly just so just enough to hold it from spinning, and then take and you can either half hitch or whip finish on the end of this is fine. Oops. Knocking stuff around here. Sometimes these are kind of tough. This is probably one of the hardest parts to teach people how to do is finish these. I'm going to whip finish with my fingers. You could just do a few half hitches too. It's fine. You're going to cover this all up with glue anyway.
Alright, so now we're actually done with the tying part of the fly. So I'll scoot this back again. And now is kind of the time where you can determine what part you want to be the top and the bottom of your fly. So you can take and just figure out what makes it look the most symmetrical is usually what I do. If you've tied the fly right it shouldn't really matter. But then we're going to take and put a, a fish skull mask on here. Just to kind of protect the end of the fly a lot too is one thing I really like about these. And actually what you can do since the mask is clear you can take and use like a flex UV resin and just kind of goop this all the way around the hook because your light will penetrate through that mask because it's clear so you don't have to use you can keep your other materials out of there is good it'll keep keep the, the UV can still go through there and you don't have to wait for a regular glue to to dry so once you've got all that on there take and push your mask on we're using a flex UV resin here too you can use a thick card or a thin hard would be fine too. I use the flex a lot on predator flies. And it takes a little longer to dry this way than it would with the without the mask on top of it, but it's definitely superior to using any other kind of glue, I think. on there. So now I'll take and these masks have a little slot for eyes on the side of them. So what I do, since I use UV resin, I don't even glue the eye in there anymore. I just set it in there with the adhesive that is already on the eye. Do one on each side. You can use uh, whatever kind of UV resin on this again. I like thin, like a solar res bone dry is really nice. What I'll do a lot of times is turn the vise so the resin kind of just falls into the crevice in the eye. Zap it. Stuff dries. If you got a good UV light, these solar res resins dry in like five seconds too, which is nice. Alright, so then we'll take same thing on the other side. Just take and kind of drop your UV resin into it so that way it kind of gets into all little nooks and crannies on there. Alright, zap that. Alright, so now your fly's done essentially. So you can take and push the fly off of the needle. The awesome thing about these needles is that they're square on the back. So your tubes never spin. I haven't had a tube spin on these yet. So then you take, and you can burn the end of these if you want to, but I haven't really found a reason to. You can take and trim the front of your tube and just kind of push it with your fingers to make it a circle again. But this is an awesome pike fly. I've caught a lot a lot of pike on this one it's pretty simple but it just works very well and the tube is nice because you can you can unhook the fish a lot easier and you're, you're more versatile with your rigging and also if you bend a hook or dull a hook it's easy to just change it rather than having to throw the fly away or sharpen the hook so thanks for watching